What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and there is no perfect movie. But now that 2019 is upon us, there are a lot more movies that I'm looking forward to this year and hopefully give me an excuse to go out during the weekends. There are a lot of movies that I'm going to go see in theaters regardless of what anybody says beforehand and there are some that I'm cautiously anticipating but still a little bit skeptical about. And before I get into the 10 films in particular that I'm looking forward to the most, I do have six honorable mentions. Serenity looks like a pretty cool modern film noir. It's got a really good cast and a talented director. The Kid is directed by Vincent D'Onofrio and takes place in the Old West. That alone is enough for me to go see it either way, especially when the fact that this is covering the story of Billy the Kid and Sheriff Garrett. That alone could be a pretty interesting story. Out of the Disney remakes that we're getting this year, the ones that I have the most faith in are The Lion King, and Dumbo, and that's because I think Jon Favreau and Tim Burton can bring some new magic to these classic stories. I'm looking forward to It Chapter 2. I love the cast of adults that they get for this version. I'm hoping that now that they got the kids' side of things out of the way, and now that they're into the harder aspects of the book to adapt, they have a little bit more to prove with the characters and the scares most of all. But I'm hoping that they still deliver on that. We have most of the same crew from beforehand, so I feel like it's still in good hands. And lastly, I'm not kidding when I say this, but I have the slightest amount of enthusiasm for cats. I am vaguely familiar with the original stage show. I know some of the songs. I do like some of the characters, and some of the casting in this one I do appreciate. I think it's good to have Ian McKellen, Judy Dench, Jennifer Hudson... I have a little bit of faith in James Corden and Rebel Wilson because they do have some stage experience. But that being said, Jason Derulo is also in it as one of my favorite characters. Not sure how that's going to go, but I'm just going to have to wait and see. But thankfully, we have a little year to uh, wait on that. So the first film that I'm looking forward to this year is M. Night Shyamalan's Glass. I'm a big fan of Unbreakable. I did really enjoy Split. I love that all three of the principal actors are coming back. I feel like they're going to bring their A-game to it. And plus, Shyamalan is staying true to the original style that Unbreakable had and having a very comic book-influenced world, but it still as grounded in reality as possible. I'm not entirely sure about Sarah Paulson's character or her performance, but... It could surprise me. It's happened once or twice before. And on top of that, as I said before, it just looks like such a cool looking movie. Fighting With My Family is about four people named Paige, Rowdy Ricky Knight, Zodiac, and Sweet Soraya. And no, they're not porn stars. They are a real life family of British wrestlers. Now why am I excited for this one? Because I'm not a huge fan of wrestling, and I hate the industry of it even more just because of how seedy it is. And I'm kind of hoping through a family dynamic we can see kind of the strengths and weaknesses that come with being in a profession like this. I'm not entirely sure how much Dwayne Johnson's involvement behind and in front of the camera goes, but it would be interesting to hear from his perspective on what it's like to be in the WWE as well. Plus, I think Stephen Merchant is a pretty good choice as a writer and director. He has proven he can do comedic and serious work at the exact same time. And yeah, that's why I'm excited for it. On my birthday this year, I get to see Jordan Peele's new horror thriller, Us. I'm avoiding the trailers at all costs. I did see it once a couple days ago, but I feel like they haven't given too much away other than the main premise. An entire family confronted by doppelgangers... That alone just sounds pretty cool, and I don't want to say inventive because we've had doppelganger movies before, but the way they present it as a home invasion thriller with some social or political context, I'm not entirely sure what it's going to be. I can only theorize, but I don't know for sure. And that's the cool thing about it going in, because when we saw the trailers for Get Out, we were not entirely sure what it was going to be about, and when we saw it, we were surprised. Pet Cemetery is another horror movie that I'm looking forward to this year, mainly because of the casting. I think Jason Clarke and John Lithgow are two underrated actors, and it looks like they're going to give it their all to this story, and I'm hoping they do. I don't know much about the book or the original film. All I've seen is one trailer, and it looked like it was going for a more old-fashioned 70s feel, and I'm hoping in the end that's what it is. Now, of course, I'm excited for Avengers Endgame. Why wouldn't I be? 
Do I really have to say more? I'm glad that some of my favorite heroes survived Infinity War. I'm glad that there are some newcomers to the Avengers films that I'm not sure how they're going to fit into it. But then again, I didn't know how some were going to fit into Infinity War, and it worked out very nicely. After that short summary, here's another short summary. John Wick 3 Parabellum. What more do I have to say other than Keanu Reeves is riding a horse and it looks like he's teaming up with Halle Berry. Now that would be nice to see her kick ass. She has not done it in quite a while, but she's fine. Kind of looks like John Wick is going even more global and large scale than it did in the second one, and I'm hoping that's the case because just seeing how the Continental operated outside of the U.S. was really interesting to see, and I'm hoping they can expand more on the world building. I love some of the side henchmen that are added in. They got a couple guys from the Raid movies. Plus, Keanu Reeves on a horse. Again, what else do I need to say? And I think it's gonna be a long, long time Till the touchdown brings me what I am to find I'm still standing, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm still standing, yeah, yeah, yeah I am a huge fan of Elton John's music. I love the fact that Taron Edgerton is the one playing Elton. I think he's a pretty good choice to represent his younger years. I hear that Tom Hardy was originally going to play him, and I gotta be honest, I can't see that working out very well. And I love that Dexter Fletcher, who did the reshoots for Bohemian Rhapsody, is coming in to direct this one, and he's taking it in a more fantasy type of musical for a biopic, which would be very fresh for something like that in the genre, because usually we're just used to seeing montages of people recording their songs, it becomes a big hit, then they turn to drugs and stuff like that, and it looks like the same stuff is in this movie too, but the visual style and kind of the surreal way the concert sequences play out, I'm hoping makes it feel more fresh and energetic. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood could be the most uncomfortable Quentin Tarantino movie ever, given the fact that it takes a real-life subject, and I'm not entirely sure if it's in the foreground or if Leo and Brad Pitt are the main characters in the story. I don't know how this is all going to play out, which kind of makes it a little awkward given the racial motivations that the Manson family had when they did these killings, but I don't feel like he would take it too far. I know some people do with stuff like Django and Hateful Eight, but the thing about a movie like Django is that when innocents were harmed or killed, it was gritty, it was ugly to look at, but when the villains were killed, it was sensationalized, it was over the top, it was a lot of fun to watch. It just had an operatic feel to it. And it's obvious, at least I hope it's obvious, that he's not going to add those parts into the movie because nothing like that happened in real life. I'm not entirely sure out of all the ten films on this list with this one, but based on the casting, again, you got DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Damien Lewis, Margot Robbie... So many others who we don't even know who they're going to be in this movie yet. That's another thing going into it. We don't need no education. We don't need no fault control. This might seem like a weird one to put on my list considering it was supposed to come out last year and then it got delayed because of reshoots, but... I am glad that this movie got delayed because of reshoots because apparently the original trailer that we got for New Mutants that was in the style of a horror movie, they just manipulated certain footage. Only a third of the movie apparently actually felt like a scary movie. And I love that now that they've seen our reactions, they're like, okay, we need to trust Josh Boone as a director even more. We gotta let him go back and do it the way he always intended. That would be great. It wouldn't be like Fan 4 Sick where they just threw Josh Trank under the bus and did whatever the fuck they wanted. I, to this day, still haven't even seen the New Mutants trailer because I want to go into a superhero horror movie and be completely shocked. And the casting, Anya Taylor-Joy, Maisie Williams, so many others who have done good work in the past. A couple of them have done really weird teen soap movies, but... That's not to say that they can't do a good job here, because Josh Boone did Fall in Our Stars, and it, that one was good. 
It could be another classic case of reshoots ruining everything, or it could be a fresh change of pace and prove that sometimes taking more time can give you a much better product. And last one, of course, Star Wars Episode Nine. Of course, why wouldn't it be? A lot of people thought The Force Awakens was too much like A New Hope, but I still liked it. A lot of people thought The Last Jedi was too different. I still don't understand that, but whatever, your opinion. But I still loved it. If you enjoy Force Awakens or Last Jedi as much as I do, then you're probably hoping for the same stuff. We want the newer characters like Rey, Finn, Poe, Kylo Ren to have a very satisfying conclusion to their arcs. We're hoping they don't mess up Carrie Fisher's role as Leia. I'm not sure how they're going to string her in with deleted scenes, but it's completely possible that it could work out. I love the fact that J.J. Abrams is coming back as a director. Colin Tremorrow, I'm not really a fan of his, so his absence doesn't really bug me all that much. I'm curious to see who Richard E. Grant and Matt Smith are going to be playing in these role, in their new roles, especially Carrie Russell, who apparently has a very physical presence. That would be pretty cool. Well, guys, those are my top 10 anticipated films of 2019. What are some of yours? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com, and thank you very much for watching. Take care.